All right, folks, God bless you guys, and welcome to This Is It. Four, three, two, one, before the fire. <laughs> Christ's purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. You're in a twin system. Twin. Let me show you. Jesus was crucified right side up. I have this image right here. His body I have is light. Peter was crucified upside down. I have his body as dark. That's light and darkness in one host body. That's the problem. You have one eye that goes to the pit, one eye that goes to heaven, and you are in a twin system. Even during the, the, the vaccine thing, all these people were standing in line to go get it right here. See them all? They're all standing in line. Look at the picture that the photographer took. You know why? To show the right side up, upside down thing. That's why and he took it for absolutely for that reason to show the right side upside down thing. Let me show you Re Revelation 2 and I, Revelation 6 2, I'm sorry. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow. The word bow does not mean bow and arrow. It means a bow of cloth of the simplest form of fabric. And a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. You see that bow right there? That bow is tying together two twin females that have just risen up out of the pit in the Ozzy Osbourne video. There they are. They rise up out of the pit and then they come together as one. And as soon as they come together as one, this is the image you get. And there's a bow tying them together. And the Bible says, and she deceived all nations through her sorceries. The word sorceries is pharmakia. And there's a cool image showing a bow tying this right side up bottle and this upside down bottle together because it's a way of spreading their net. It's a way of getting the snare inside of you. Now, let me, let me show you guys just something really amazing. The, uh, and then, and this is just honestly, I've been out here just going through folders. There's so much information I haven't given you guys yet. There's, there's so much scripture that I want to just concentrate on some scripture, even if I have to spend five hours out here a day for the next week just going over these scriptures because it's all proven out. The Lord has let me see the other side. Do you understand? There's a good and there's a bad. And when the Lord lets you discover the bad and you see the bottom half of that rainbow, so to speak, you see the bottom half and what they're doing. That's why it says thy bow was made quite naked and their joy is to devour the poor in secret because you don't know you're upside down. Once you invert everything, you see that the virgin's a dead sheep, and you're like, why is it a dead sheep? Why would the virgin be a dead sheep? And then you have to go on this quest, which the Lord put me on, and neither shall you touch it lest you die. The word is lie with a woman. We're here because we're the angels that chose to come into the system and do the sin against God that you're not supposed to do. Even somehow Ozzy Osbourne knows it's the ultimate sin, because right here it says the ultimate sin on an Ozzy Osbourne album. And it shows this dominatrix like the female spirit running him, telling him like, go forth, go and get it. And he's a locust from the pit. I mean, what do you think the odds are that Ozzy Osbourne would, you know, have that? He also had a locust in his latest video. And he also showed uh, very clearly what I've been talking about. Look, he had the eye open up. And who's in the middle of the eyes? He even put himself in the middle of the eye, like uh, that other spirit looking through. That's why uh, when I saw that uh, that pathetic creature, Gene Revel, and he took the video from the ark where the Lord showed up as an eye in the sky, and Gene Revel put that demonic eye in place of the eye in the sky that the Lord did. Do you know how much trouble those guys are in? <laughs> I mean, did, I don't think they know. Karen and Kathy and Jim, Gene Rebel, everyone at that channel, they don't have any clue that they're in the most horrifying trap. The trap they said has become their own. It's it's horrifying the trap they're in. And it's like they don't realize it. It's it's the most mind boggling thing in the world. But what does the Bible say? Because they had pleasure in unrighteousness. And I can guarantee you that the facts speak for themselves. Their behavior is completely unrighteous. And because they had pleasure and unrighteous, God will send them strong delusion. Well, he said he was going to remove Karen's blessings in the whole family. 
looks like they've all gone into strong delusion now. So God have mercy on them. It's horrifying. So back to this I think I was like, wow. The, so the Lord has really rolled it out now and let me discover and let me show everybody the other half of the equation is what they're trying to tie together in this system. And so that's why you have the Twin Towers becoming the One World Freedom Tower. And let's and let's not forget the bombings on the U.S. currency that the Lord let me prophesy. I, I mean, how ironic is this? I, okay, just stop and, and take a moment. Look behind me. I did not go and look for this cityscape of New York. I didn't. It just, my programs were crashing. I wasn't able to get videos out. I was super frustrated. I just said, you know what? I'm going to uninstall this program. I'll reinstall it and see if something better happens. And I did. It took me to a homepage that I was completely not familiar with. And then I clicked on a button that had that. Next thing you know, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. How do I get out of it? I couldn't just back out of it. And then I clicked on another button that had something to do with uh, sharp edges, uh, smooth edges. And I just I was like, what's that? And I clicked on it. And then all of a sudden, this was my background. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, where did all the buttons go? And then I couldn't find any way to back out of it. And I just was like, oh, forget it. But in my spirit, I heard, just leave it. Okay, well, I'm bearing witness to... You see the One World Freedom Tower right over my shoulder right there? There it is. That's the One World Freedom Tower. It took the place of the Twin Towers. That is their representation of them taking over the Earth, the Serpent Race. There it is. That's their representation of we've taken over. And Barack Hussein Obama, he's the Antichrist. He sat there and said, be still and know that I am God. He read Psalm 46. When George Bush read the memorial, did the memorial there, he read Psalm 23. 23 and 23, like twins, is 46. Barack Obama read Psalm 23 and 23 together, 46. There it is. Okay, and that represents the unified uh, host body system for the, for the devil. So that's what it is. Now, I'm the guy the Lord used to show everybody all the bombings on the U.S. currency. The Twin Tower bombing, the Federal Building bombing, the Pentagon, all printed on U.S. currency notes. I'm the guy that the Lord used to show the world that. You may go out there and see other people that have posted that stuff, but there's nobody that uh, that had that stuff on their own. The the Federal Building bombing, nobody. The Pentagon, nobody. My brother's the one that showed me the Twin Towers in 2002. And from that point on, once I got saved, the Lord showed me everything as it rolled out. Then he gave me a prophetic utterance that included what's going to happen to the cityscape you're looking at right behind me. That cityscape is going to be destroyed. It's printed on the U.S. currency notes. There is a tidal wave coming over a seven-story building. That's printed on the new $10 bill, and that's a prophetic utterance the Lord gave me in 2007. Behold, the hand of the oppressor has been lifted against you. Pretty interesting word, lifted against you. And out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem. So there's a $10 bill with an orange. The, the paper is orange. Why would it be orange? Oh, like radiation. And so there is a tidal wave coming over a seven-story building. And then right here, here is a sequential, a sequential set of photos of that devouring wind. And let's go back to the first one. There is the $100 bill that came out in 2014 after I prophesied seven years later. Here is the buildings. Here is the water coming between the buildings right right here in the middle. And then watch. Here it is. Here's the next layer of ink. There's three layers of ink. Nobody knew this. The Lord showed it to me. There you go. There's the next layer of ink. And here's the next layer. Here's the next layer of ink. Let's see. So it should be one. Here it is. One, two, three. Three. And let me enlarge that. So see, three layers of ink. Devouring wind, boom. Devouring and, let's see. One more time. One, two, three. There it is. So there's a, out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. There it is. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem. There it is. And you are literally looking at the person that delivered that information sitting right here right in front of a cityscape of New York that I did not plan. That would suggest to me that the Lord is letting me know, get ready, it's coming. Okay, now, what I would like to do tonight is, I would like to go over an old video 
because it slammed home some stuff for me just a little while ago. I was sitting here just going over so many different things and I had opened this folder and I, I'm determined to help everybody understand all this information. So I went back to the folders that I have and I just started looking it just one folder. Look at all these different links. This is just in one folder, folks. I, this is actually half the folder. So this is just half of one folder. These are all links. Look at that. I mean, look at all that. Those are all links. These are all links. This is all stuff that I've handled. These are all pictures from, look, one half of one folder. And everything's significant. And there's not a picture in there that doesn't have a story. There's not a picture in there that doesn't cross-reference with something else. There's not a picture in there that wasn't there for a reason. So every picture in there was picked, uh, was picked, was put in there, was made uh, to be in there for a very particular reason. And all this stuff is just a story uh, that that brings this whole mystery together. It's so beyond the human brain. It's just fascinating. But I want to go over a video I did in 2019 because I just watched the movie Rango. And the Lord used the movie Rango to show me, Jonathan, you you may, you went to the other side. You, I discovered the other half of the bow. The other had the, their bow was made quite naked. The Lord let me see their little upside down hidden world. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've exposed it. Uh, it's it's not arguable. The Vatican's a snake giving birth to another snake. Largest altar in the world to dead sheep. Uh, people come up and they, hey, I drew a picture of you, Jonathan. And they draw pictures of me with a dead sheep and a serpent eating me, which just happens to be the Vatican and the largest uh, altar in the world, which is in the mouth of the serpent, uh, the window, uh, which is a dead sheep. So the Vatican literally is a serpent eating a dead sheep. And I have people that have walked up to me and said, hey, I, I drew a picture of you. Oh, okay, super weird, freak show, whatever. Okay, but they put a serpent eating a sheep on the picture they drew of me. It's happened several times. My wife gave me a card with the exact same agenda, a serpent eating a sheep. Turn it to you. So I'm the guy that would discover the other half of the bow, make their bow quite naked, the bottom half. So I discovered it. The Lord let me see it. He let me understand their language. And now I believe it's time for their imminent destruction. And I mean, all those that have turned their back on the Lord, that haven't turned back to him for forgiveness. And all those who have, uh, though, have the Bible says, whoever accepts you accepts me. Whoever rejects you rejects me and the one that sent me. That goes for Kathy, Karen, Jim, all of them. I'm sorry, but I'm a servant of the Most High. They can sit there and say everything they want to say. I don't care. It doesn't matter. In the end, the Lord God is my judge. He's everyone's judge. And I'm content with that because I work for him. And whatever he wants is what I want. So whatever. So people can make mean videos about me all day long. They can malign and they can chop up little pieces and try and make it look like what they want. It's okay. You got to talk to the boss, dude. <laughs> you think I care? <laughs> it's so funny. It's sad though. It, there is another side of the coin. Part of me is like, you know what? Everybody gets what they deserve at a certain point. You know what I mean? I'm forgiving and I'll give everybody a first, second and third chance. But after a while, you know what? It becomes annoying. And when people had the opportunity to turn away or say they're sorry or do the right thing, they chose not to do it. So anyway, it is what it is. All right. So anyway, so now I'd like to go over this older video that just came in front of me today because I was just going through all this stuff and it's the Lord just plopped it right down in front of me. And I just thought, wow, that is so crazy that it came up and it just confirms so much of the other stuff uh, that I've been doing now. And it, this video is several years old. And so I'd like to I'd like to play it and it's I will bring you up. I will bring you up out of the land of Egypt. Isn't it fascinating when you look at this picture and you look at the Hoover Dam right here. And if you pay close attention, this guy's arms, see his arms going like this in the same position as Nut right here, the, the Egyptian goddess Nut. And their, their system is like this, the dome over the top and the eyes, see the eye of the female that's upside down, male right side up, female upside down. 
and the male is dead. See the so that this system gets the male energy. See it down here on the ground. And Robert De Niro is part of that system. Arnold Schwarzenegger is part of that system. They did a plaque at the Hoover Dam to show the system. And they have wheat and weed. See, like one grain here and one grain. And that represents the two different seeds within the host body system, which is mentioned in Isaiah. Let me just show you uh, Isaiah. So the Lord's chosen servant, behold my servant whom I uphold. Look at the word uphold. It means to take up, to hold up. Let me change that. To take up, to hold up, to maintain up to retain up, to stay up. So the Lord God's servant, everything I've told you, ready, is about up. Because we got turned upside down, so when we just get turned up, then you know that your eyes have become single. I told you. Now watch. It's even going to show you the diverse seeds. Watch. Okay, so you know guys like Aerosmith. Arrow is means like of the air and smith. Okay, watch this. Okay, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant to the people, for a light to the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, and to bring out the prisoners from the prison. Look at the word prison. Okay, prison. A fastener. A smith. See it like arrow smith? A smith of a thing. A prison smith. Ready? To shut up. To close up, to deliver up, to give over up, uh, to shut, to shut in, shut self out, up, up together. There it is. To shut up together. Now watch this. Watch the word for prison here. Okay, so. Here's a, the word prisoner is bound, a captive, those which are bound. So you have an up and we've been bound together with a down. And we're bound together in their system, which is the host body, which binds together up and down. Okay, here's a good one for uh, that poor pathetic creature, Gene Revel, where Kathy and Karen and Jim end up wallowing with the pigs. Here's one for him. Okay, here's the word... Uh, I'll let you guys try and guess what it is. In the original sense of separation, see it right here? Two heterogeneities, see it? Heterogeneities. So someone that wants to try and argue with this, good luck. Diverse seeds, see it right there? It says diverse seeds, not arguable. Diverse seeds, that means different seeds. Mingled seeds, see it right there? That's two different seeds that have been mingled together, sheep and serpent seeds. There they go. In the original sense of separation, two heterogeneities, diverse seeds. But where did I get this definition from? From prison houses. But this is a people robbed, ready, robbed to plunder, catch, gather, take for prey, and spoiled. Okay, they are all of them snared, turned upside down, remember? to spread a net, just like that vaccine thing I showed you. They are snared in holes. Remember I showed you uh, the pit, uh, uh, Satan, I will I will set my throne. Throne, it means uh, as canopied or covered, and to fill up hollows like holes, like a wasp nest. Here it is again. It's always the same. Okay. My, thy people are robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. Look at the word prison. Ready? Prison. It says a prison. A prison. What's the prison? In the original sense of separation. So what's, so what's your prison? Separation from the Lord God. How? Two heterogeneities. What's that mean? Two different kinds of seeds in one body. There it is. And then look at the word house. Dungeon. And they are for a prey. Booty, plunder, spoil, robbed. And none delivereth for a spoil. And none saith restore. Okay, so. Listen, I want you to understand, by the way, that this is what the Lord God did to us. If you don't understand this, you'll never get it. We're guilty. Do you understand that? 
we're here because we're guilty and our host body is our prison suit. The other team, the serpent race, they use us as fuel, as prey. Do you understand? So there's two things going on. You got to understand that. So watch this. When, who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and who and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil? Look at that. Who gave Jacob for a spoil? And Israel to the robbers did not the Lord against whom we have sinned. See, so it's time to understand, everybody. You're here because you wanted to be here. You're here because you sinned against the Most High. It's right there. I mean, I've known this for a long, long time, put in a lot of videos, but I think it's time to revisit the understanding of that. And then the people that just won't come clean, he's saying, okay, turn them over to strong delusion. Look at Kathy, Jim, and Karen. It's the craziest thing in the world. They have aligned themselves with a complete pathetic lunatic that's an obsessive lunatic. Gene Revel, you think that's his name? No, genetic revelry, because... That's what they revel over, and then they're, they they do nothing but malign others, and that's what I called Karen out on in the beginning. Why are you maligning me, Karen? She lied and lied and lied, and then she had to come clean, and then because she came clean, everybody get the F out of the ark. Everybody, y'all get out of here, because why? Because you got caught? Yeah, and we're keeping all the stuff y'all gave us. F off. That's all that happened. It's that simple. It's that simple. And then all the little cavalry came in to try and, oh, get, don't... Don't let anyone try and go for their money. It's like I could give a rip about their money. <laughs> I walked away from more money than they probably ever even imagined. Anyway, so here we go. Let's do this. So now I want to show you guys a video. This is just fascinating to me. Right here. I will bring you up out of the land of Egypt. And just remember, the Ian Bud Light commercial is just making fun of one of us. Just like Ian that got brought into their system. That's why Arnold Schwarzenegger is in. Go, okay, put your arms up. He made Ian put his arms up like that. And then just like mimicking this guy. And then he had Ian get down on the floor to mimic this. I mean, it's crazy. And then, I mean, Robert De Niro doing this F Trump because they're all part, they're all kind of the same serpent cloth. They're all, all part of the same thing. That's why actors are all on board with, you know, the 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 left politicians they're actors <laughs> it's, it's no brainer okay but anyway i watched the movie rango and it was so cool because the lord used the movie again just to confirm jonathan i've shown you you've understood and now because you've understood and because you persevered that which i promised you is coming just saying all right and so I watched this video. I haven't watched all of it. I only watched segments of it. But the way the Lord used this video, just for me, just for me on a personal level, I was, I was like, Corey, come check this out. This is going to blow your mind. Now, you know, everybody just, I know everyone's going to go, dude, you're wearing earrings or whatever. Take it easy. Okay. I used to wear earrings all the time. I quit wearing earrings because I was like, it's just not me anymore. But, um, so don't make an issue of it, please. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to play this thing. I'm going to see if I can get it to enlarge and sit back and just remember this is from 2019. So that's 19, 20, 21 4 years into it. Wow. It's kind of crazy. I, I I was still doing a group hug thing, but I didn't have a bear. <laughs> so you're going to get a group hug here starting the beginning, but I I'd like to I'm just going to sit here and watch this video because I, I need to. It just reminds me. I'm sitting in a building that's got the Led Zeppelin logo up on one wall. It's really an angel being eaten by a dragon, but it's Led Zeppelin. How would you ever know what the name Led Zeppelin really meant? A, a Led Zeppelin can't fly, but the angel that's in the in the um, Led Zeppelin album uh, is really a dragon eating an angel and he's holding on to a Z and a P, which is, uh, 2616, I think, Kata Dynasteo. Um, 
uh, kata means down, dynasty, dynasteo, and it means powerfully bringing someone down. So they powerfully brought down God's angels. That's why they're called Led Zeppelin. I mean, for goodness sakes, why would you name your band Led Zeppelin? Any? Why would you name your band Alice and James? Alice means of nobility and change. So see, Satan makes them front men and puts them out there in the world musically and makes them a success, but Satan's just using them for his glory. You understand? That's what this is all about. Okay, now, here we go. Group hug and before. There's a group hug. Group hug. I love you guys. God bless each one of you. God bless you. Peace and grace. Okay, guys, let's do this. Uh, Father, please let this work. Please. Okay, guys. I'm not going to get into a long explanation of everything that's not working. Let's just go. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to get some scripture out, some more scripture. I'm going to reaffirm and reaffirm and reaffirm everything that the Lord's shown me. Okay, let's see. 100% nylon. That doesn't make any sense. Turn it upside down. 100%. No lion. That's where this ministry started. That's a. The Lord told me I had to get my... He told me you have to post your personal testimony. I did not want to. I'm so glad I did. <laughs> Turned out to be everything. Okay, now, you ready? Let, now, remember, I've shown you. You're in a system where there's a good you and there's a bad you. There's a double you. Like one right side up, one upside down. Let me see something real quick. So I'm going to show you this little chart thing I have here. And I want you to look at up, right side up and upside down. So over here we have good is up. Evil is down. Light is up. Dark is down. God is up. Satan is down. Up is up. Down is down. There you go. So that's one really good way just to remember everything. I, I mean, it's so simple. Up, up is good. Up is light. Up is God. Down is Satan. Down is dark. Down is evil. So you have opposing forces. Opposition. That's what the entire host body system is, and it's inside of you. That's why to be converted, instead of having a right side up you and an upside down you, you have to have two right side up, and it comes together, and your eyes become single. It's the most obvious thing in the world once you see it, once you understand it. So <clears throat> now I'm going to give you some scriptures, and I'm going to show you how the illusion, the apocalypse, the, the word apocalypse means unveiling. I'm going to show you how the whole veil is coming down on everything right now because we are really living in this hidden ancient Egypt right in front of your face. It's just, it's invisible, but it's, the veil is coming off now. That's why it's the apocalypse because we can see it. Apocalypse means the unveiling. So I'm going to show you some scriptures and I'm going to show you physical representation of what I'm talking about. I always come with the scriptures. So let's, uh, Let's let's start this. You know what? I'm going to open up <clears throat> John chapter 8 real quick. Okay, I want to start here because this is <clears throat> this ministry and what the Lord had me do from the beginning was prove the very existence of God. That's Remember I told you a long time ago the Lord said I'm going to use you to solve the riddle of ages. Like who are we? Where do we come from? What's life all about? Is there a God? I, the Lord's allowed me to prove his very existence. And the way you do that is you turn everything up, which proves the existence of the Lord God. I am. Okay, and I'm going to show you that. So let's do it. This is going to be fun. Okay, here we go. So in John 8, 12, Jesus spake these words unto them saying, right here, look, I am the light of the world. So look at this. I am. Look at this. 1510. Now, I want you all to understand something. If I click on this word 1510 right here, see it? M? Okay. And it's it's already colored this color. It's kind of this copper color right here. And then it says I exist and the I is yellow and exist. So any other time, any other time that <clears throat> I click on that an e sword, 
it's going to come up the same color. It's going to, you know, that I've already colored that box. So you understand? So later when we're, when I'm clicking on a word that doesn't say I am, but I click on a word and it brings up that exact box, it's obviously the exact same thing, right? So watch. Okay, so Jesus said, I am the light. So I exist. I exist. Am the light. Look at this. To shine or make manifest. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, means obscurity, but shall have the light of life. Okay, so I am, I exist, the light of the world. So he's saying that, I exist, and he is the light in this world. Did you know the only way you can see the light in this world is to turn everything up? I'm going to show you all through this presentation. I'm going to show you how we're living in basically ancient Egypt, just disguised right in front of your face. It's amazing stuff. The veil's coming down, guys. So here, here, here he goes. So let's see. Where do we go? Right here. Okay, I am the light. Of the world the word light it means to shine or make manifest now I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight that and I'm just gonna show you I want you to understand your vocabulary completely so the word manifest look what it means <clears throat> the word manifest let's see let's see to make manifest. Here we go. I'll just, you know what? I'm going to write manifest definition. Definition. I want you to have the exact definition. So there it is. Clear or obvious to the eye or to the mind. To display or show by one's acts or appearance or to demonstrate. Oh, so the word manifest means to make clear or obvious to the eye or to the mind. Okay. Without me pulling up a bunch of folders, um, I, you know, I'll, I'll pull up one folder. Here are all a bunch of things the Lord God has me, had me make manifest. You turn this sheep, you turn the virgin upside down, it's a dead sheep. The largest altar in the world is a dead sheep. <clears throat> the zoomies bag, there's a dead sheep. Uh, the largest altar in the world becomes a large bug. Uh, all these images, everything I'm showing you, this angel on this guy's back, you rotate it this way, it becomes a dead sheep. Hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti, you turn the queen upside down, she's a dead sheep. Uh, a, a pyramid from Guatemala, you turn the king upside down, it's a dead sheep. So all these things I just showed you, were made manifest by the light. So the light that's in me worked through me to make clear and obvious to the mind or to the eye what that I'm really is. I'm going to pause it for a so, moment. So think about that. So I have so many images just in the one folder I showed you to start this video with. I was overwhelmed. That's only in half of the folder. So there's, you know, maybe 30, 40,000 images in all the folders that the Lord's made manifest. Because the light, now think about, you know, the people who I was in Houston helping try and run, you know, get their thing going that they called the ark and everybody willing. But the Lord had a greater purpose in it to show me that how treacherous and how evil the twin female system is. Because it's truly treacherous and camouflaged. And that's what it was all about, really, to understand. Because he revealed the eye in the sky being our eye. And that was part of the whole thing. That was the point of the whole thing. To reveal the other eye is a star. And who hid that? The twin female system is what hid that. That is the essence of what's been hidden in the system is our other eye. So if your eye be single, your whole body's full of light. So I'll make my eye single by doing this. I got one eye up, one eye down. I'll turn the other one up. Now my eye single. What hid, what hid that? The twin female system is what hid that other eye. The one that goes to the star. And isn't it ironic that he had me reveal it right in front of Karen? And Karen's the one out maligning me with her sister and, and Jim. That's just, it's mind-boggling. But it's not arguable. Because in the Lord's courtroom, the record will speak for itself. Guaranteed. Absolutely. 
So here we go. Pretty fascinating because I just went through all that. Every what I, the the Bible says, whatever makes manifest is light. So the word manifest means clear or obvious to the mind or to the eye. So everything I've shown you has to be made manifest by the light. What do you think? Ooh, the devil's showing it to you? No, that's darkness. The devil's darkness. Whatever makes clear or obvious to the mind or to the eye is the light. Jesus is the light of the world. So the light of the world is in me. And then you have the people who I was there helping speaking horribly about me. So what does that make them? Could they be the light as well? No, they can't. They have to be something else. That's all there is to it. Facts. Okay, here we go. So if you're looking at them upside down, you would think, well, that's just a pyramid from Guatemala. But I turned it right side up so you can see what it really is. It's a dead sheep with the devil superimposed over it. Um, very, very, very clear, very obvious image right here is when you turn this virgin upside down, it's a sheep with its tongue sticking out. Okay, so what is the only way that I made clear and manifest that which was hidden? That that which was concealed by turning it up. What happened the night I got saved? The Lord said, Jonathan, read the tags in the clothes you're carrying. I read the tag. It said 100% nylon. And then I said, that doesn't make any sense. And then I looked at 100%. Lord said, turn it upside down. 100%, no lion. And the, so the Lord was showing me that truth is absolute. It's not relative. There's only one truth. You're in a world that's upside down and backwards to the spirit of the living God. It's that simple. Wow. <clears throat> when I I'm say there's a pause it, truth, it's that I'm... simple. Let me show you another video real quick. Okay, this is the movie National Treasure. Now watch, just like I'm showing you in all these other videos, the names in all these movies, all these commercials, names are significant and the idea is significant. Watch and listen to what he says. Can it really be that simple? That pipe represents the kingdom. The secret lies with Charlotte. The secret lies with Charlotte. There's everything. Could it really be that simple? The secret lies with Charlotte. So that, see the pipe has the kingdom on it. And then he puts the pipe stem in, representing a phallic symbol. Now watch, he turns it upside down. Could it really be that simple? Turns it 180 degrees the opposite direction of the phallic symbol and the greatest treasure there is and the door opens and they found the treasure. Could it really be that simple? All you had to do was put the stem in and turn it upside down. Okay, it's kind of weird uh, right now. I, the audio is not going with the image, but you got it. Let's just do this one more time and then I'll pause it. Okay, sorry, a little glitchy, but could it really be that simple? 
and he puts the thing in and turns it upside down. He puts a meerschaum pipe that's named Charlotte. The word Charlotte, the name Charlotte means a free man. It's a female name. See, because when we came into the system, we got this female energy trapped alongside of us. The secret lies with Charlotte, and then he turns it upside down. The word Charlotte means a free man. What a weird name for a girl's name. Charlotte to mean free man. The secret lies with Charlotte. Get it? And he puts it in because the whole kingdom is Charlotte. The whole kingdom is Charlotte. He turns the whole kingdom upside down. And he's a free man because now it's become single. He's gotten turned up. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the video I was playing. I want to make the point one more time. We're made manifest by the light. So the light that's in me worked through me to make clear and obvious to the mind or to the eye what that really is. So if you're looking at them upside down, you would think, well, that's just a pyramid from Guatemala. But I turned it right side up so you can see what it really is. It's a dead sheep with the devil superimposed over it. Um, very, very, very clear, very obvious image right here is... When you turn this version upside down, it's a sheep with its tongue sticking out. Okay, so what is the only way that I made clear and manifest that which was hidden? That that which was concealed by turning it up. What happened the night I got saved? The Lord said, Jonathan, read the tags in the clothes you're carrying. I read the tag. It said 100% nylon. And then I said, that doesn't make any sense. And then I looked at 100%. Lord said, turn it upside down. 100%. No lion. And the, so the Lord was showing me that truth is absolute. It's not relative. There's only one truth. You're in a world that's upside down and backwards to the spirit of the living God. It's that simple. Wow. <clears throat> when I say there's only one truth. What I so just like the secret lies with Charlotte, could it really be that simple? He turned the entire kingdom upside down, which is what the Lord had me do. I turned the whole world upside down. That's what the Lord had me do. That's why in Habakkuk it says, Thy bow was made quite naked because the Lord had me turn their whole world upside down. And I discovered their bow. And that's why there's Skittle commercials where they're eating the bottom half of the rainbow. Because we are the light. We're children of light. People that I know, like the people that bailed on the ark, they're children of darkness. There's no way they couldn't be. Otherwise, they wouldn't be where they're at right now. Do you understand? Everything is, everything's made manifest by what is. I mean, so we're, we're all found out. Uh, whatever I do, the Lord knows everything I do. I know he knows every single thing I do, every single thing I think. He knows that about everybody. He knows whether your heart's right or not. And if you're hiding stuff or not. So it is what it is. Here we go. What I mean is to escape the trap that you've been caught in, which is the host body system. Okay, so... There it is. So now let's go back. So I am the light to shine or make manifest, especially by race. Here we go. Then Jesus said, Jesus said, and he said unto them, you are from beneath. I am from above. Look at this. Watch this. This shows you everything. You are from beneath. Look what it says. Down words. I'm going to change that to yellow. And I'm going to change this to like pink or something. Or blue. Downwards. You are from downwards. I am from above. Upwards. Upward. See? It's always the same. You are from beneath, I am from above. You are from downwards, I am from upwards. So anyone that doesn't receive you or the truth, they don't receive Christ. If you can't receive the simplicity of turning everything up, how could you possibly know Jesus? I mean, just stop and think about it. So in this world, you're a slave in a host body, just like they were in ancient Egypt. 
God's people were enslaved by the Egyptians. That's why in the beginning of the Bible, we start with the Hebrews enslaved by the Egyptians. And there was the Exodus when the, the Lord God led them out of Egypt through Moses. We're going to get to that in just a minute. So when they were slaves in Egypt, that would, here we are at the end of the Bible. We're at the end of the Bible. We're in Revelation right now. And so we're at the end of the Bible and everything's being revealed. I'm a messenger of revelation. I have, I, I'm in the book of Revelation. I'm the angel of the church of Philadelphia. I have the key of David. The Lord has opened doors that no one can shut. He knows I have little strength, but I have not denied his name. So I'm here to gather the church, the new Jerusalem. You understand? And the only way to do that is by turning you up and have you ready for the arrival of Christ. For that very last tick on the clock to where it goes tick. Just the last grain of sand runs out and boom, everything flips. And that's when all hell breaks loose. So here we go. Here we are again. Watch. And he said unto them, you are from beneath, downwards. I am from above. Upwards. Ready? Let's do it again. Okay, ready? Up, down, God, Satan, light, dark, good, evil. That's the system, and it's in this is inside of you. So there is a up you and there is a down you. There is a double you, but when you convert, you become single. There's just an up you. And you're freed from their system. That's how you get converted. That is conversion. And when you accept the truth. Okay? it's uh, Here it is again in scripture. I'm going to show you in scripture constantly. You are from beneath, downwards. I am, I am. See, I am right there. I am. I exist from above. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you how the Lord God used that to prove he exists. In 1 Corinthians 2, in 1 Corinthians 2, it says, you know, Paul's talking about when he came to them, he said, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but with demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So let's go there real quick, real quick. We'll go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2. Ready? So here we go. That your faith, look, that your faith, persuasion, that is credence, moral conviction of religious truth or the truthfulness of God as a religious teacher, especially reliance on Christ for salvation. That's what faith means, that your faith should not stand. Look at the word stand. I exist in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, miraculous power, okay, of God. Now watch, and all we have to do go is go right down here, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. I'm going to change all that color to light blue. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. He knows go to know absolutely. Because they are spiritually, divinely discerned. Anacrino. 350. What does it mean? Ana means up. Crino means to select by separating and judging. Judging down to up. I am from above. You are from beneath. I am from upwards. You are from downwards. So when we're in their system, when we turn things up, we literally prove the existence of the Lord God. I'm going to pause that. And by in doing so and getting turned up, we have judged them because now we're out of their snare. And by virtue of the fact that we are out of their snare that they set, now they are condemned. And the trap they set has become their own. Isn't it fascinating, fascinating that 
when you read Revelation, and it's talking about the whore, and I will recompense her double. She brewed a cup of terror for my people, and now I will recompense her double. It's always, you know, you're going to get back double because it's a twin system. You get it? So it's pretty fascinating. Pretty amazing. Okay, here we go. In their system. Because their system, everything's upside down, and so everyone's under this, like, spell. You're wide awake, but you're asleep. You're, uh, you're, you're dead in your sins. You're walking around. You think you're alive, but you're really dead. It's the greatest enigma there is. It's just unbelievable. So here we go. Again, it always proves out. <clears throat> so here we go. Now we go back to John. John chapter 8. Here we go. So Jesus said, you shall know, see there it is, to know absolutely, hinosko, say the word, hinosko, hinosko, you shall know the truth. Look at the word truth. It says true, truly, verity, but aletheia, look at the root of the word. It's alethes, and it means true as not concealing. I'm going to change all that to one color. True as not concealing. I'm going to give you two perfect examples. Very simple. Okay, so you could be looking at this thing that says the city of Waco right there. It's a V with a star intersecting a V with a crescent moon. It's really Islam hiding right in front of your face. So you just turn it over and it's 9-11, the angel of the bottomless pit. And that's the crescent moon is a uterus birthing a star. That's why our emergency number is 911, angel of the bottomless pit. Because see, we're in their world. Of course, everything's going to reflect Satan in this world because it's you're in his world. Genesis 1 is not the Lord God creating anything. It's angels creating an idol, which was a no-no. You do not make a host body to an abbot. That's what they did. Okay, now watch this. So I'm gonna, we're going to go to Exodus now. I'm just going to jump around and watch this. This is knowledge from the Lord God that I'm sharing with you right now. This is the way the Lord God has trained me himself. It says, I'm going to pause that because I want to bring some up. Because now these people in Houston who I tried to help, you know, uh, bring to fruition their plan of the ark. It was also the Lord God putting me in there to show that the eye that the twin female system concealed was a star. And that was the ultimate thing to find out. It's like finding the other side completely and revealing what we are completely within their system right in front of their face, like an indictment. So isn't it fascinating that now Karen and Kathy are saying that they, they're glad they got out of the cult, that they were kicked out of the cult. Usually cults try and not let anyone leave, by the way, but they weren't kicked out. They were called, they were called out on their nonsense. I called Karen out. I was like, the Lord told me that you're maligning me. She lied about it over and over. Isn't it fascinating? Then Kathy became very maligning. Same thing. Had a talk with her husband. He seemed like a real nice guy. I said, you know, if they'll just stop all their nonsense, just let all this go away. But instead of stopping it, they ramped it up and they turned Kathy at her channel was putting my videos saying uh, Two-Faced Liar. So now she's calling a servant of the Most High a liar. I laid the hands on her sister, but the Lord said her all their blessings are going away, not just for her, the entire family. That's it. That's what he told me. I'm just saying what he told me. So now they've lost their peace. Do you think if they had any peace, they would be at Gene Revel's channel rolling around in the mud with the pigs? I mean, that's just pathetic. It's sick and it's sad. And honestly, it's weird because we, we pray for them over here. I don't think they're praying for us. I just could have a feeling they're not. Anyway, but here we go. It says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. This is so important that, that you understand. The house of bondage. So Egypt is the house of bondage. Look at this. Bondage, servant. So you become a slave to Egypt. Okay. Thou shalt have no other gods, Elohim. See it? Look what it says. You shall have no other gods before me. See it's Hebrew word 430? Elohim. Thou shalt not make. Now here's what I want you to pay very close attention to. You see this word make? 
you shall not make. 6213. See it? It's bright green. And right down here, it's pink. It says to do or to make in the broadest sense and widest application to accomplish. I'm going to change that color accomplish to this rust color so you know I did it right in front of you. Now watch. The word is asa. It means to make. You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any... So the word image means idol. An idol. Do you understand? Or any likeness. You ready? Phantom. Oh my Lord. Specifically embodiment. Oh, what do you think a host body is? It's a bunch of angels embodiment. It's an embodiment. It's a place for them to take on a body. You can have sex, do whatever you want, be a god unto yourself. It's the forbidden fruit. So, see it says phantom right there? So the word likeness means Okay, you shall not make into the any graven image. It means idol or any likeness, phantom, specifically embodiment of anything that is in the heaven or the, or the earth or the water beneath the earth. By the way, water right there. Again, semen. You shall not bow thyself down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, watch this, I, the Lord, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah, God, am a jealous God. Right here, look at this, Hebrew word 410. There is no arguing this. You cannot argue this. Anyone that argues this is delusional. I am the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. Look, the Almighty. I'm going to highlight this all yellow. So you see it in all yellow. Mighty, especially the Almighty. But look at the root of the word right here. It's 352. I'm going to make it yellow. And look at this. Here's the sheep. Chief politically, also a ram. Because Jesus is the lamb. He's the ram. So our God, the Almighty God, is associated with what? A ram, which is what? A sheep. way it gets even better ready so i i the lord your god am a jealous god almighty god see hebrew 4 10 visiting the iniquity look at the word iniquity moral evil perversity because angels wanted to get naughty i the lord your god am a jealous god uh, i'm sorry i'm a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. See the word hate? I'm going to make it light blue. Click on it. I'm going to make it light blue again. Them that hate me. It means to hate personally. Enemy, foe. Okay, ready? If you make a host body... You hate God. That's what it says right there. Watch. Ready? Watch this. Here it is. Serve them. Looking for this one word right here. Thou shalt not make any graven image. See the word make? Say it again. Asa. You shall not make any idol or any likeness, phantom, specifically embodiment. I just showed it to you. I'm going to make that easier to see. Now, let's go to Genesis 1. Okay, these are the Ten Commandments I'm reading right here. Okay, ready? They've already been broken. Here we go. Genesis 1. Watch this. And Elohim said, look what Elohim, gods of the Supreme God, angels so a bunch of angels a cumulative force of angels lucifer and a cumulative force they are many in one said let us make look at this look man what's the word make right here i'm going to highlight it i'm going to change the color to light blue let us make asa 
the to do or to make, to accomplish. It is the exact same word as Genesis, I mean as Exodus 20. You shall not make unto yourselves any graven image or any likeness. No idols, no phantoms, no embodiments. Got it? You shall not make unto yourselves any, so let us make man. Ready? A human being hypocrite. Let us make man in our, ready? Representative figure, especially an idol. I'm going to do it all yellow. A representative figure, especially an idol. A phantom. Oh, wow. Isn't that exactly what it just said in Exodus 20 right here? In Exodus 20, it said, Thou shalt not make a saw to do or to make any idol or likeness, phantom, specifically embodiment. And see, then they carve these altars like the dead sheep to represent what they did. See, the large altar I've been showing you all these hundreds of times is big dead sheep. And I just showed you again this big dead sheep right here. This thing. They make these things to show themselves as God of this world. So you shall not make unto yourselves any graven image because this is the formation of the host body system right here. That's what they're glorifying. They are glorifying the formation of male. There's a penis and you turn it upside down and it's a female. And then you go back to Genesis 1 and it shows exactly what they did and they made a big altar to it. Genesis 1, 27. So Elohim created... It's a different word, to create. The word is bara, to cut down as a formative process. Think about that. What did they cut down? A bunch of angels? The, uh, so they create, I'm sorry. So Elohim created man in his own vain show, right there, vain show, representative figure, especially an idol. That's why it says resemblance, semicolon, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. I'll do it all the same color. I'd like to pause it there for just a second. Um, what about the Skittle sheep commercial? The altar in the Vatican made a, is a big sheep made up of a bunch of angels, and we got put into a system where there's a a dark Jonathan, there is light Jonathan and dark Jonathan, you know, light and dark in the same body. Isn't it fascinating the Skittles commercial has a sheep that's black and a sheep that's white? Remember eating from a treetop that's cut down? Ba-ra to cut down is a formative process. That's why, right? So you we were looking at Genesis 1, to cut down is a formative process. And you're telling me that Skittles has a commercial where there's a black and a white sheep and they're eating off a, a cut down tree. Do you get it? And then it's eat the rainbow. Oh. Mm. These new Smithy Mix Skittles are delicious. I know. Two different flavors blended together in each one. How can they blend together two things as different as an orange and a mango? It's unbelievable. What about peach pear? A peach blended together with a pear? Now that's an unusual combination. <laughs> yeah. you, you two sheep boys, stop that jibber jabbing. Blend the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. Blend the rainbow. Remember I showed you Isaiah 24? Or I think Isaiah 42. Hang on one second. Yep, but this people is robbed and spoiled. They are all snared of them in holes. They are hid in prison houses. Pri they are all hid in prison houses. The word prison houses says it right here. In the sense of separation, two heterogeneities, diverse seeds, mingled seeds. And here you go. Here they are right there, the two. Blended together with a... And they're eating off of a cut down tree. You think that's possible? 
And then he says, what about Peach Bear, remember? I goes, what about Peach Bear? Pear? Now that's an unusual combination. Blend it together with a pear? Now that's an unusual combination. What about Peach Pear? A peach blended together with a pear? Okay, so the Bible says we're aliens and foreigners and sojourners, right? So Peach Pear, I knew, I knew what he was doing because I speak their language now. 1616, alien, foreigner, immigrants, sojourners. See it? Aliens, foreigners, immigrants, sojourners, strangers, peach pear. There you go. That's why I said peach pear. What about peach pear? A peach blended together with a pear? Now that's an unusual combination. <laughs> <laughs> and they're eating off a cut down tree. Okay, let's go back to the video we're watching. It's ex always the same bust. See? Hence a representative figure, especially. That's why they made an altar of a male and female genitalia. So they did create them. Male and female created he them. That's Lucifer creating that. Now watch. <clears throat> I'm going to show you Genesis 2. This is the first time you see Hebrew word 121. Watch. Genesis 2. And then it says, And the Lord God, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah Elohim, He's the Lord. In that, so that's the Lord God in the system called the earth formed. Look at this. As a potter man from the clay. The potter's clay, right there. And then watch. And then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. This is where man becomes a living soul. And then here is where, and the Lord God formed. Uh, every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto, see the word right here, Adam? I want y'all to pay very close attention. Adam. It's Hebrew word 121, the name of the first man as Christ's representative in the system. Watch. So here is where the first time you see Hebrew word 121 and the first time you see the name, the, the, the name for man, the, the word for man is Adam. All you got to do is go to Genesis 1 and when it says, let us make man, Hebrew word 120. See, it's Hebrew word 120. It's Adam. Um, and it's from root 119. It means a human being, a hypocrite. Let us make a hypocrite in our vain show. Representative figure, especially an idol. After our likeness, model, similitude. Okay, now watch. Genesis 2. Right here you see the word Adam. Adam. It still looks like Adam. I call it Adam now because it's capitalized. A-D-A-M. Hebrew word 121. And it says, Adam, the name of the first man. Now watch, this is the Lord God's representative in the, in the system. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. And watch. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. That's right, because the one that the Lord God made. Watch, Adam. It, see, it says, look. Adam, from Hebrew word 121, I'm going to make this all the same color, yellow. From Hebrew word 121, Adam, the first man typically of Jesus. So, Je so Adam was Jesus' representative in the system, allowed to fall so everybody could have life. And he could get back anybody he wanted and maintain, maintain control over the entire system by the commingling of the two. Genesis 1, Genesis 2, 
commingles in Genesis 3, the serpent, and then you have the commingled race, iron mixed with miry clay. Two different races in one body. And now we have a new race of beings being birthed within the human race, just like Lady Gaga said, and that race has taken over the host body system, and it's become, instead of this, it's become purely evil. Because all those souls during the history of the world that are going into the pit is forming a race of locusts, scorpions that are coming out of the pit, and when the pit opens the dimension to the other side, they will be released into this system. Okay, got it? So here it is. So Adam, the first man, Adam, see Adam, the first man, typically of Jesus, man as his representative, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That's why Jesus is the first and the last. Howbeit it was not first which was spiritual, but that which was natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. Do you understand? Okay, now I'm going to go back to John chapter 8. Watch. <clears throat> and it says, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, you shall know, to know absolutely, Hanosko, that I am, I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things, that he is the Lord God in the flesh. And you shall know the truth. Look, no, he knows go to know absolutely. And the only way to know absolutely the truth is just as simple as knowing is the city of Waco is really showing 9-11. It's no different than one nylon, no line, same as the night I got saved. And it's no different than this little chart I showed you. Up and down, God and Satan, light and dark, good and evil. Inside of you is this system. That's why you see that this in logos all over the place all the time. Okay, now I'm going to show you how, okay, you shall know the truth. And the word truth means, watch, true as not concealing. Well, what is the only way that you can not conceal something? You simply turn it up because it's upside down. That's all you have to do. Oh, sorry. So in order to see the truth, and I'll give you a quick example of that right now, you shall know the truth. And the, okay, so remember that I told you the night I, I got saved, I prayed our Father, because I prayed to our Father in heaven, because he is from above. I held my hands to the sky and prayed to our Father. And then Michael looked at me and said, you say Hail Mary now? After I said our Father, water and light came down and filled me with the Holy Spirit. And then he said, you say Hail Mary. And even though for some reason, all of a sudden I knew it was wrong because the Spirit inside of me was new, I was born again, I was anointed in that alley. I was beaming with light. So when he said, you say, oh, Mary, I, I looked at him like, why? And he just nodded, do it. So as I said the words to the prayer, I felt death. Here's the reason why. When you pray to the virgin, it equals a dead sheep. That's why. So now my testimony is perfect. Because the Lord God wanted to use me to reverse engineer death for everybody. So you would know that death is simply the separation from the Lord God. Because you've been turned upside down. That's what death is. You got turned the opposite direction from the Lord God. That's separation from the Lord God. So now you're in a duplicitous system. You're double-minded. You're unstable in all your ways until you get converted. It's the most obvious thing in the world now. Now, remember, what did it say in John 8? Let's see. You'll know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, as in not concealing. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The word free is eleutero. Isn't that funny? I was with a 
female, Eleuthera, the night I got saved, and I used to worship her, but then I got saved and the true set me Eleuthera. Male, female, Eleuthera, licentious freedom, freedom in Christ, Eleuthero. I know the truth because I got converted and the truth set me Eleuthero. I wonder what the odds of that are. <laughs> it's like one in a trillion. Okay, and what does it mean? It means to exempt from moral mor or mortal liability to deliver and make free. Okay, now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take some of these things that I've shown you. Y'all know that in Acts, that Paul, the, the exact same thing, he was called uh, traveling on the road to Damascus, a light shone down from heaven, and Paul fell off his horse and said, when we'd all fall into the earth, I heard a, uh, the voice say in Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, stand, rise, and stand upon thy feet. And then he told Paul, I've called you to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. Let's see. Here it is. Yeah. So here it is. So Jesus says, but rise to Paul. Stand upon thy feet. Remember the word stand in 1 Corinthians? That your face should not stand. I am in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Okay. And then Paul, stand upon thy feet. I have called you to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness, which is upside down, to light. From the power of Satan, which is upside down, to God. So let me show you that again. Okay, so again, let, look right down here. You know what? I'm going to enlarge it. So Paul was called to turn them from darkness, sorry, from from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. So what's he really doing? He's just turning everybody up. That's it. I was called to turn them from Satan to God, from darkness to light. I told you I'm identical in that regard to Paul, Isaiah, and other prophets that have come with the identical message. Message. Isaiah said, Woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord. Their works are in the dark. They say, Who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Right here. Ready? Genesis 1. So surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. I'm sorry, Genesis 2. Ready? And the Lord God formed, look, as a potter, Adam from the, from the, it says from the dust. Sorry. Right here. And the Lord God formed, the word is Yatsar, especially as a potter from the dust. And the word is clay. Okay, so now watch this. I want to make a point real quick. So here in Genesis 2, when the Lord God, not Elohim, the Lord God, the self-existent eternal Jehovah Elohim, when the Lord God, the head of all the Elohim, when he forms Adam, it's, the word is Yatsar, and it's as a potter forms clay. Because the word dust is clay. So when the Lord God Yatsar forms as a potter forms clay, Adam, who he breathes into his nostrils the breath of life, and man becomes a living soul. That's the same thing as 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Now we'll go right here, and I'll just show you Isaiah. So Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. Remember, my trademark is I always come with the scriptures. So anyone that wants to argue, they're just arguing with the word. Here it is. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. Remember, upside down. It's And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as, regarded as, the potter's clay. <clears throat> I mean, you know, it's like, 
It's like, okay. That's as obvious as it gets. I mean, it doesn't get any more obvious than this. Okay, so there it is. Again, let's go back here. We're going to go back. I'm going to... I'm going to pause. So when the Lord God forms Adam, it says potter's clay. He breathes into him the breath of life, and man becomes a living soul. So the vocabulary there there is when the Lord God formed as a potter, Adam from the clay. But surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, not the thing in Genesis 1. Genesis 1 was the the, the making of the idol that we weren't ever supposed to make. It's so obvious in, in 2020, uh, you know, looking over your the hindsight's 2020. It's so easy to see it now. It's just ridiculous because the scriptures and, and the confirming witness of the gift that the Lord gave me, they're confirming witnesses. That's why I know a lot of people, not a lot, but a pretty good group that's in trouble. Here we go. I'm to make sure I'm wrapped up John. And then we're going to go to Exodus. I want to show you something. John chapter 8. Let me finish this. And yep, Jesus said, you are from beneath. You are from downwards. I am from upwards. See? Okay, guys, I don't know if I can make this any more simple for the entire world. I mean, it, it, it doesn't get any more simple than this. This is the mystery of everything, and it's the most simple thing in the world. It's so crazy. Okay, you are from downwards. I am from upwards. You are from beneath, downwards. I am from above, upwards. So God is up, Satan is down. I mean, there's just no arguing this anymore. Anyone that wants to argue it, it's like, okay, go ahead. It's not going to get you anywhere, but you can argue it if you want. Okay, so here we go. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you eleuthero. Now, here we go. Now, here's the people that like to argue with you, and they don't understand anything you say. <clears throat> okay, let's have a little talk. How many, how many of you guys have, like, tried to show the most simple thing to somebody? Like, hey, check out the sheep. They're like, whatever. Well, you're crazy, right? It's kind of weird, isn't it? It's like, what the hell? How can you not see the Vatican's a big snake? It's, it's a building. There's a sidewalk that's a split tongue. <laughs> it's like... It's almost incomprehensible that they don't get it, right? Well, it's true, though, because before I show you this next scripture, I'm going to show you one other scripture. We're going to come back to John 8, 43, but first we're going to go to John 1. In the beginning was the word. Now, look at this. I'm going to click on this, the word. I'm going to change this color right here to light blue to match that. Ready? Word. So it's G3056. It's logos. I'll leave that pink. I'm going to change this to light blue. Okay, so it says, A topic or subject of discourse, also reasoning, the mental faculty or motive by extensions of computation, specifically with the article in John, the divine expression that is Christ, right there. So the word is the divine expression that is Christ. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The word was with God, and the word was God. I'm going to highlight that. The word was with God, and the word was God. So let me ask you. <clears throat> can you understand God? Can you go to heaven without understanding the word? It's a yes or no. The answer is there's no way. It's impossible by definition. By reading that sentence, it's impossible. In the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God. So if you don't know the word, you cannot know God. It's impossible. Can he reveal himself to you if you're somewhere and you're out in the boondocks? God can do anything in any way he chooses. And he can make sure you're right where he wants you, when he wants you, for what reason he wants you. He wrote the whole Bible, you know, through, through men. He wrote the word through men. Think about that. It's perfect. There's not one error in it. Think about that. It's unbelievable. 
here we go. So, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, you ready? Oh, sorry. Let's go back to John chapter 8. Here's the people that will listen to you. Okay, ready? Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Ready? Why do you not understand? See the word understand? Right there, look at it. Oh, it's he knows go again. He knows go. To know absolutely. Why do you not know absolutely my speech? It means what my talk, my preaching. Look, my preaching, what I'm saying. Guys, I run into this like on a daily basis to a point that's just like, it's almost not believable sometimes that people have YouTube channels dedicated to me as a false prophet. That just means they threw the match on their own fire. Oh, is that? How fascinating. This is, this is obviously pre-Karen and pre, pre-Jim, pre Kathy, all that. Isn't that fascinating? I've been dealing with this kind of nonsense for a long time. It's interesting that the Lord would reveal the last part of the equation, the twin female parthenogenesis thing, and he would actually put me in the hemisphere of two twin females. It's crazy. It's crazy that they grew up on Rebel Road. wonder what the odds are. That's all it means. Why do you not understand? He knows go. No, absolutely, my speech. Even because you cannot hear my word. Look, logos. It's the exact same thing as John chapter 1. In the beginning, there was the word. So if you can't hear and you can't see and you can't understand the stuff that the Lord's given me to deliver, a lot of people get really like, well, so you're saying, click, if we don't hear you, then we don't. That's correct. Correct. That's right. I am a messenger of the Most High. So if the Most High sent me with a message and you don't receive it, you didn't receive the message or the one that sent the message. He sent it through me. So yeah, the answer to that is yes. If you don't receive the message I'm sending you, you will go to the pit. It's tough. It's, oh, oh, oh. it's true. What do you think all the other prophets did? Oh no, you'll be fine. You guys are, don't worry about it. The Lord sent me, he told me to tell you this, but you, you know, it's okay if you guys don't receive it. Wrong. Read Ezekiel, read Isaiah, read Jeremiah, read the books. If they didn't repent when the messenger showed up, that's it. <laughs> that's the point. He sends messengers to try and get everybody to turn from their sins. <laughs> I mean, this is making all kinds of sense now, isn't it? Have you ever seen anybody ever on YouTube anywhere? that's shown up with the kind of data I've shown up with. It's not me. It's the Lord God using me. What do you think? I'm not smart. Oh, I think I've got this figured out. <laughs> it's like, hell no. Heck, I couldn't figure out how to manage my life before I got saved. I mean, you know, you could give me a million dollars and I could screw it up. <laughs> it's like, whatever. Yep. Okay, so here it is. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you cannot hear my word. Why? Ye are of your father, the devil, the traducer, Satan. And then let's walk that back. To traduce, to accuse. I'm going to pause that. Satan's called the, the traducer, the false accuser. Boy, has that happened since the ark. A lot of false accusations have gone out. That's why I called witnesses on the phone Put them on the phone. Put them on that speaker right there. I called Ryan. I called uh, Susie and Eric to go against these nonsense lying comments from Karen and Kathy and Jim. They, they just make comments. Well, if they're making comments that aren't true, that are lies, then who's running them? There's no, there's no question. If you're making false accusations, that's Satan. He's called 
the traducer making false accusations. That's what he does. To traduce, to accuse, right? Let's see. Let me go. Let me go back just one more. I want to go right to here. To cast out, to throw down. Uh, so you are of your father, the devil, and the lusts, remember 1939 uh, is from the root 1937. Do y'all remember where that's from? To set the heart upon, to long for, to covet, to lust after. Do you know where you saw that 1937? On the flow, progressive, remember? Protection by flow since 19. 19- 37 since the longing because that was when they got the fall that's representing the garden the lust the scorpion i'm gonna pause this yeah remember the commercial with flow isn't that fascinating i guess this must be before i went to chinati remember when it was written on the on the rock that my building was set down on since 1937 lust and desire and then i had that big female whip tail lizard going around my my uh my little building my little rock building and the lord had opened opened me up to understanding parthenogenesis and that's when he was teaching me about parthenogenesis that was when he focused on it i just wow it's all been perfect and that's when he gave me two halves of the same rock and had me put them together uh it's probably just a cult just saying sting that's where it was do you get it that was the sting of death that's it that's why they say protection since 1937 on the flow protection remember with the scorpion stinger there it is because you're your father the devil and he was a murderer from the beginning and so and he abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own pertaining to self, private or separate, his own self. He is a liar, a falsifier, a liar, and a father of it. Now, can you be a liar and be saved. You have to repent of your lies. Can you get saved and then tell a lie? Yes. But you know what? It will burden you badly. And until you come clean with it, life will suck. What about David? Remember David? He committed murder. He lied. He tried to cover it up. And then he came clean. A lot of people like, well, do I lose my salvation, Jonathan, if I start smoking cigarettes? I'm like, no, but you may get there a little quicker, you know, <coughs> right? But the Bible says all things are permissible, but not all things are expedient. So you should know yourself where the line is. Is it okay to smoke a cigarette? That's between you and God. Is it okay to smoke pot? That's between you and God. Are you smoking so much pot you can't get anything done? Well, that's probably pretty bad. Are you smoking pot because it helps with, you know, some ailment? Well, that's probably no problem at all. Are you smoking pot because you want to relax at the end of the day a little bit? Well, it depends on how much you're smoking. What do you got, a six-foot apogee and you go through a quarter ounce or something? That's probably a little excessive. Again, I'm trying to make a point. Whatever you do, you do it before God and everybody else. You know what I mean? If you're like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. Well, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. If you're like, well, I don't have any shame like for what I'm doing, then it's probably a okay. You know what I'm saying? But don't let your freedom in Christ be a license to sin. That's what the Bible says. Don't use your freedom in Christ as a cloak for sinning because, no, nah, that's not how it works either. You should know. it's but You work it out between you and the Lord. You know, once you get saved, you have a conscience again. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I shouldn't probably be snorting this line of cocaine. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. It's like, it's like, uh, you know. Okay. So, all right. Let's, let's keep moving. Let's see where we're at. Okay, now it's time. I showed you Genesis. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. The word, I've already memorized it, is asar, right? Here we go. Let us make, say, let us make man in our vain show, especially an idol. Look at the word make. It's asa. Okay, I said asa. To make, 62.13. Exodus 20, don't make any idols. Thou shalt not make Asa to make any idols, embodiments, phantoms. It's the same exact thing as Genesis 1. Now, you want to see how back in the old days the Lord God showed us that he was going to bring us out of the system that we're in? We're really in Egypt, guys. The whole world is really cloaked ancient Egypt. Just are you able to see it? I can see it everywhere now. Okay, ready? Exodus 3. Now Moses is going to be bringing people out. Now remember, moreover, he said, I am the God of thy fathers and Abraham, let's see, Isaac and Jacob. Let's see, I highlighted this. Let me get down here. There we go. You know why, you know why uh, Isaac means laughter? That is mockery. Because Sarah was too old to have a child. Like, there's like no way it looked like God, like the Lord God, you know, the almighty God, El, was going to be able to do anything in the system. So when he has Isaac, he, he has him named Isaac because he's laughing like, I'm the almighty God and I'm going to take over the entire system. You get it? That's why he's named Isaac. Laughter. Mockery. Because he's like, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> That's basically it. Okay, now watch this. Okay, so here we go. 316. Okay. And God said, moreover unto Moses, thus thou shalt thou say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. And, he, and when he says his name, it's saying to the children of Israel, I am hath sent me. Okay, remember, I just showed you that. I'm going to highlight it. I showed you that in 1 Corinthians. I exist, right? So I showed that to you in 1 Corinthians 2. So who is it that Jonathan Clegg's been getting his information from? Who has been training me? I am. He has taught me to prove to all of y'all that he exists in this system. That's my job. Do you get it? So the guy, the Lord God of our fathers that Moses was speaking to is who I'm speaking to. I just proved it. All glory to God. By the way, he likes to take miscreants and, you know, he, he, he specializes in remodeling, you know, he, uh, Sorry, I'm trying to get this thing on my head. He specializes in taking something that's a mess and fixing it up. Yeah, that's what he did. He took a real mess and he fixed it up. He's in the restoration business. So, you shall tell him that you have met with I am. And then, here we go. And he said, and now here we go. Now watch this. And I have said, so this is the Lord God telling Moses what to tell the Egyptians. And I have said, I will bring you up. There it is. I will bring you up out of the affliction 
of Egypt. Oh, y'all remember the affliction shirt with the dead sheep on it? Oh, now here we go. Now I'm going to start showing you the veil coming down. Now I'm going to start showing you some pictures. Because remember the affliction t-shirt that's the dead sheep? Well, y'all remember in Daniel, right? The time of trouble is when that female rival takes over the host body system. And that's the great tribulation. In the end, a woman will compass a man. Have you seen all the gender confusion going on? It's like, remember I told you I have an Extinction Rebellion video to show you that's really important? Extinction Rebellion has nothing to do with climate change. The, the founders of Extinction Rebellion, quote, want to get away with the idea that heterosexuality should be accepted as the norm on the planet. That's what it's really about. So it's the extinction of a normal sexual paradigm in lieu of some totally perverted, you know, from the other side. Um, I, what I should have said there was homosexuality should be accepted as a normal form. Because Extinction Rebellion is about heterosexual is not right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have that in this folder. Like I said, I have a lot of stuff y'all haven't seen yet. A lot. I was amazed at how much information I have that I haven't been able to pump out yet. It's staggering. Here we go. Side Sitra Akra, do as thou will. You know, they're trying to legalize pedophilia, bestiality. Hey, whatever. I mean, this has gotten that weird. That's what's going on. That's what Extinction Rebellion is really about. That's what the founder said. Mm -hmm. So here we go. I have said, I will bring you up out of the land of Egypt, up to arise, up to ascend, up. See, it's always up. And then he says, I have seen, let's see, and look at this. I have surely... I'm sorry, let me back up. So the Lord God's telling Moses what to tell him. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and the Isaac and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and have seen that which is done to you in Egypt. Ready? Freak out, guys. I have seen that which is done to you in Egypt. Ready? Look at done. Oh, wow, to do or to make. And the same as let us create, let us make man in our image. Because God's angels got trapped in host bodies as slaves to the Egyptian in their system, which is this right side up, upside down thing. Want to see it? You want to see the people that propagate it? Let me show them to you. Let me show you some of these guys. Okay, there you go. Here's their system. Ready? There it is. There's the Egyptian system. Okay, this one is living off the death of this one. One's down, one's dying right side up, upside down. See it? Making this big U over the system. See it? One dies, this one lives. And see how he's got his arms up like that? You know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger like Robert De Niro F. Trump. Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Ian Bud Light. Come on, my little princess. Put up your arms. Remember? I got them all right here. Let's see they worship. They worship. This is the system. Now, you count the stars. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Let's see. There's 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There's 19 there. There's 12 here. There's three dots. Watch this. Watch this. This is their system. So now we figured out the God of this world. That's the female mother goddess. So L12 uh, is destruction. So right here, 12 stars is destruction. 19 is slaughter. And three is the angel of the bottomless pit right there all in that one image and it's right side up upside down and there are and 
Then 19 and 12 together, watch this. 19, 12, look what it means. To put a burden on, I put a burden on, properly to burden upon inevitable side effects that go with becoming a burden. Okay, so <clears throat> check it out. We were turned into slaves, beasts of burden, carrying a demon around in a host body. Get it? Right side up, upside down. That's their system. That's why Robert De Niro, all the actors, you know, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Bud Light, all these liberal lunatics, this is who they worship. They worship the Egyptian pantheon of gods and goddesses. Got them. Got them. So there it is, 1912. Those are the number of stars together. It means basically to become a beast of burden, you know, like the Rolling Stones. I'll never be your beast of burden. Okay, now, and then 12 stars is destruction. 19 stars is slaughter. Uh, three. I'm going to pause it right there because I don't know if I'm going to get to this. Here is Ra. There, the, the god Ra. Look, look what Ra is. Is this, is this a falcon face right here or is this a vampire? I can guarantee it's a vampire. See it? Because I'm the Johnny, Johnny Flat Eyewear guy. The Lord made sure I had a sunglass company called Flat Eyewear Vampires. Come out of the darkness into the light with Flat Eyewear. Okay. That's not a coincidence. The Lord planned that. He made sure he knew that I would that I would have a sunglass company. He knew I'd be a professional skydiver, falling out of the sky upside down with fangs on, sky surfing with the space shuttle Discovery behind me where I look like I'm crucified. Like crucified, get it, Discovery. Then falling out of the sky upside down with fangs. Like, you know, you fell like you fell into a vampiric system. It's perfect. It's all perfect. But here's Ra right here. Look, Ra. Ra, it's, it's a vampire. For the three dots, angel of the bottomless pit. And now let's look at some pictures put together. And here we go. Now watch this. This is the Hoover Dam. You see the two pillars here and the two over here, like 11-11? Okay, that's to represent the male and the female, male and the female. They're male and female, Genesis 1. God's male and female, Genesis 2. And then you got the one, see the one dead in the water right here? See this? And see, they died to make the desert bloom. And see, you got two different seeds. See the hand there and the hand there? And this is really the face, this is really the face of a goat. There it is. Eye, eye, goatee, mouth, eye, eye, horns going up. There it is, just like Baphomet. And there is Robert De Niro. Arnold Schwarzenegger, and they're visually representing their God they worship. Bust it. What? Victory. Got him. <laughs> that is absolutely insane. I don't believe I just did that. I mean, I, I don't know how long I've been doing this. But I don't think I've been doing this since 2019. That is so random. So crazy. All right. Look at the joy of the Lord. Let, let me ask you a question. Can you see the joy of the Lord in my face? It's a yes or no. I have the joy of the Lord in my heart. I do. There's no doubt about it. Praise God. <laughs> Totally busted, man. <laughs> Look at that. Look at him. He's all, ugh, Trump. Well, that's why they put the T upside down in the resist stickers. I showed you when you look up Satan, when I showed you all Satan, what did it say? Resist. Why do you think there's a resist with the T upside down for Trump? Because they're a bunch of Satanists. Now, you know, again, not a Donald Trump. Oh, Trump's going to save everybody. No, Trump was put in office to bring the system down. Trump is bringing it down on everyone's head. And they know it. And they're freaking out. That's why they're doing everything they can to get rid of the guy. And they, I mean, they are bent in getting rid of him, thinking they're going to, you know, they're going to get it done. So now you know why Taylor Swift is standing up at the VMA Music Awards. In front, why would you be on a stage with two giant U's 
Look at this. This is Taylor Swift. Look what you made me do. See, you and you. The good you and the bad you. Look what you made me do. Get it? Ha, 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 ha. So, that's why a yoke, when you're unequally yoked, even a yoke for oxen, because the Bible mentions, you know, being yoked together. You're yoked together, together with your own demon. There's a double you. There's one you, and there's the other you. There it is. So now you know the system. There it is. Remember, there's the Ian Bud Light commercial. Arnold Schwarzenegger, my little princess. And what's he doing? He's doing the same thing as the Hoover Dam. They died so the desert can bloom. Look how the, he had this guy get down on the ground. You know what Ian means? You know what Ian means? The guy's name in the commercial? Ian, Ian means gift from God. They put Ian down on that floor by the ping pong table because it's blue like water, just like the Hoover Dam, because they're going to take out the Hoover Dam. When it's time, the Hoover Dam's going, it's on the 50, and New York's going, it's on the 100, and the $10 bill. I prophesied it in 2008 before Obama became president. It's going to happen. Told you. Was this right? It's a yes or no. 100% nylon. Jonathan, turn it upside down. 100% no line. Was that right from the beginning? It's a yes or no answer. The answer is hell yes, it's right. It's perfect. It was a perfect way to call me as a messenger, wasn't it? It was. And then we got to weed out all the shills. Collect some false profit. No, you're going to burn. Sorry. Yep, there it is. That's why they... That's why they make that thing, double U, double U. Get it? There it is. And there's the right side up. I'm sorry. There's the right side up, upside down, male, female. Watch. So there it is. The female that runs the system, the mother goddess, upside down. See it? Male and female. When one has to die, they died so the desert could bloom. Get it? There it is. That's why these guys did the same thing to Ian in the commercial. The ex this is the exact same thing right here as the Ian Bud Light commercial right here. Identical. Absolutely the same thing. Okay, so now you know that we are, we are literally living in ancient Egypt, but it's being you know, it's being um, the veil is coming down now. I, I mean, I can see so much. It's like, it's unbelievable. I mean, when I go out now in the car, it's like almost everything I see, I can knock off now. Pretty much almost everything. It's mind-boggling. So, yeah. Jesus is coming. Now, uh, let's see. Little caveat. I've seen some people doing some videos, and I know they're excited about Scripture. Awesome. Be very careful about being a teacher. Be very careful about saying this is exactly what this means. Word to the wise. Not many should be teachers. Do not start making yourself a teacher unless the Lord God makes you a teacher. Do not appoint yourself or you will come to a terrible end. I guarantee it. Uh, that's... Some people get really excited, which is awesome. You should be. But to just go on YouTube and start saying, oh, I've broken this down and I know exactly what it means. I've seen a video or two and they're, they're you know, and I, I'm happy for them to see them excited. However, there are some errors. So be very careful. Okay. Just because I care about you. I wouldn't say it if I didn't care. I'm serious. You don't want to, anyone that wants my job is a lunatic. I mean, seriously. I, and when I say that, the Lord knows what I mean. Yeah, good luck. Anyway, I hope you like a, a good trouncing. Anyway, so now I'm going to do a short little Extinction Rebellion thing. I want you to see what this is all about. That's what all this, 
you know, having transgenders reading books to little kids, normalizing transgender in schools, mom and dad's fighting over an eight-year-old that the mom wants to get a, you know, be transgender and wouldn't give the kid affection unless he would dress like a girl. This is just, you know, this has just gone off the rails. It's like, uh, it's a spiritual thing. It's a female energy taking over. Now, I'm going to show you that in this Bible real quick because I want you to see it's in the Bible. Okay, ready? Daniel 12. Now, and at that time shall Michael stand up to stand to arise. Who do you think I met in that alley? That's who I met. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standed for the children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble. See that word? A female rival. Affliction. Where have you seen affliction before? Remember Exodus 3. Affliction. I have seen... I will bring you up out of Egypt, of the affliction of Egypt. Depression, that is misery, affliction, affliction, trouble. Who is Egypt's uh, gods and goddesses? Well, let me show you real quick. Okay, there is Nut. Uh, wait, wrong one. There's a lot of them. There's Nut. Oh, rats. Hang on one sec. Here we go. Let me show you Ra. Okay, here is a necklace that's the pendant of Ra. And what people think is a, what people think is a falcon, uh, you do, you're not, uh, you're not perceiving it uh, through the lenses of truth that the Lord's given me. And that's because I'm a messenger, and so he gave me very acute abilities. And that is a vampiric angel thing. That is a man. That's an eye. An eye. Those are fangs. It is like a snake-like human with wings. And it's disguised as a falcon. It's basically a vampire. Oh, that's weird. I used to own vampire sunglasses coming out of the darkness into the light with Vlad eyewear. <laughs> Probably just a coincidence. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> Goodbye, Robert De Niro. I love you guys. Group hug. <laughs> okay, guys. Keep the faith. Walk the walk. Don't talk the talk. Don't be contentious when you're trying to show this. If someone doesn't get it, don't get angry. Pray for them. Like, you know, Lord, I pray that you can open their eyes. I pray that you soften their heart. I pray that something happens to bring them down to where they need you. But if they weren't predestined, I'm sorry. That's all there is to it. For though, for those whom he did for now. Would you like me to look it up? Watch this. Let's do it. Everybody needs to know this scripture. That way you can be at peace. For those whom he did for K and Camo. <laughs> there it is. Romans 8 29. Okay, so ready? Let's just go here. We'll go to Romans. 829. Ready? Okay. How are you guys liking the Bible study? Romans 8. Man, everything's perfect in this. This is the most unbelievable thing. So we're seeing the perfection of God when we see the scriptures. So, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Now get ready. If you're made in the image of God, why do you have to be conformed? Why do you have to be born again? Why do you have to repent? I mean, that's just nonsense. You have to do all those things because you're made in the image of Elohim. That's why. Idol. Come on. You know you're an idol. I mean, come on. Come on. 
We all know we're idols. Deep down inside of you, you know it. When you go by the ugliest, stupidest thing you can wear because you don't care how you look? Mm, no. Oh, uh, you know, like, I'm not going to mention any names, but <laughs> someone I know. Uh, I saw him wearing some boots. I used to fence, you know, fencing. And uh, and uh, I saw someone wearing these boots. And I was like, what the hell are you? A, are you a fencer? Do you fence? <laughs> I was like, those look like, it's like, so you buy a pair of boots and make you look like you're a fencer? Like you fence? What's that all about? Well, it's because you want to look cool. I mean, why would you buy them? I mean, you know. I bought my wolf shirt because I liked it. I'm like, it's kind of cool. Right? So inside of each one of us, you know, we have that. Now, here's the thing. Can you go outside and not worry about what you look like? Well, have you guys seen me in dickies with dirt on my face crawling out of holes in the ground? Uh, Yeah. Have you guys seen me like all sweaty and filthy and dirty like I just don't care? Uh, Yeah. Have you seen me dressed up in a coat and tie? Yeah. Have you seen me dressed in like workout clothes? Yeah. Okay, so the thing is, if it rules you, if your appearance is what rules you, you got a problem. Just admit it. And that's called vanity. And vanity is the number one enemy of God. If you can't leave the house and, you know, I mean, I y'all wouldn't believe what I leave the house in sometimes. I mean, I look like I belong on the street corner. I, I try and look nicer for videos these days because I know there's an audience I need to, you know, like a lot of times I can't just sit here and go, hey, guys, I'm sorry about, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry I got grease all over my shirt and I look like I just dropped a burger on myself. But let me tell you about God. You know what I mean? It, so sometimes you have to, you know, do what you got to do to do certain things. So, but the point is, we are idols. The human host body is an idol system. I mean, admit it. Did you ever worship another person? <laughs> did, I, did I ever worship another person? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, oh, she's so hard. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, just be honest. And when you're honest with yourself, that's when it's like, you know, you can just let go of all the, you know, all the phony, fake, just whatever, just be done with it. Just admit it. Admit who you are. That's basically what this is all about. Just admitting who we are and what we've done. And those who are predestined, they'll come to Christ. That's why I tell people, don't try and throw this seed at everybody. I mean, once you throw the seed, to go back and start throwing seed in their face is just insane. I know some people, good friends of mine, that wouldn't leave it alone with family members, and then they cause conflict. That's not love. That's like you freaking out wanting to be God, making sure someone gets saved. You, When you seed something, I've seeded stuff. I seed my lawn. I go out and I throw seed, I scatter seed. And you know what? Grass comes up and if there's a patch that doesn't have any grass, I'll go throw seed maybe one more time and if it doesn't come up, it's not the seed, it's the soil that's not good. So the soil represents our hearts. And so if you throw seed at somebody, like you try and show them the images, you try and say, hey, check this out, and they're like, whatever, that just means the soil's not ready. But I'll tell you what, you know what gets soil ready like nothing else? Like when you till up the ground, you know, you run like a tiller over and just, and it mulches up the ground, it, you know, puts those big spikes in, just rolls it. Well, you know what really does that to people's hearts is hardship. Hardship does that. It just tears up their whole lives and everything gets, to, oh, what's going on? And then all of a sudden they need God. That's what the Great Tribulation is all about. A lot of people are going to come to faith during the Great Tribulation. It's going to be a tough thing, though. So here it is. For those whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Say it out loud. For those who he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that, they might, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. I got called. I got called in an alley. Well, I got called before that, but he drew me in. And whom he called, 
them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Then shall we, then shall we then say to these things, what shall we then say to these things? I'm sorry. If God be for us, who can be against us? Okay, so, do you understand that if the, the Lord's God's got his, set, his sight set on you, you're his. Read that out loud a few times. Just read it out loud. For those whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate. Let's look up that word so you see it for yourself. Let's look up this word first. Foreknow. I'm going to knock that down, knock that down. I'm going to knock that down, knock that down, and I'll do this. Ready? Here we go. To foreknow. To be aware of before it happens. To know in advance. To know beforehand. Okay? I'm going to. Okay, foreknowledge. In the term used in theology to denote the uh, presence on foresight of God, that is, his knowledge of the entire course of events, which are future from human point of view, and also use the King James Version of Rise, blah, 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 blah. the idea of foreordination. Okay, knowing beforehand, okay, for those whom he did foreknow. Okay, now let me go back. Where'd it go? There it is. He did predestinate. Now watch this. Yeah, y'all need to know that there's no way uh, there's no way around this. So a lot of people, you know, try and turn the Bible into what they want it to be. Uh, let's see predestinate, predestined, um, let me get some synonyms, predestinate synonyms, foreordained by divine will or decree, foreordained, predestined, predetermined, okay, so, so what he already predetermined for those whom he did foreknow, he did predetermine what would happen. How do you think he knew what my name would be, Jonathan Clark? How do you think he knew I he made me a skydiver vampire sunglasses falling out of the sky upside down with a girl with a friend named Eleuthera? That's just insane. That's beyond my brain's capability. But he made sure of all of it. So I'd be able to look over my shoulder and go, I'm actually the angel of the church of Philadelphia. This is crazy. It is what it is. So anyway, so once you accept the truth of the Bible, you'll be able to just like let go and relax. You can't force anybody to get saved. You can't shove so much knowledge down someone's throat that it's going to change a thing. I like, I love this little saying, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. You, you can sit there and try and convince somebody all day long, and even if you do, if their heart's not ready for it, it's not going to change a thing. Nothing. So just throw a seed and leave the seed and model Christ. Help people. Be kind to people. Open doors for people. Someone needs help. Help them out. You know, Let others see Christ in you the way Jesus would behave. You know what I mean? That's it. Give somebody your Snickers bar. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> no. No, not that. <laughs> anyway, so, all right, guys. I love you. Group hug. Okay, I'm going to pause it there, and I'm going to give you a Johnny bear hug. Here's the bear. 
Wow, that's kind of well. And here's Johnny, a real hug from Johnny. I love you guys. Mm, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much. God bless you guys so much. Uh, just, I love you. And God loves you. And uh, peace and grace. Um, pray for your enemies. Pray for those, you know, people that are in this strong delusion. I don't, I don't know what to ask for for them anymore, to be honest. I just pray that there's some way that good can come out of what's happened at the ark. God have, God have mercy on them. Anyway, um, there's a hug from Johnny. And, um, I'll get to, you know, more vids. Like I said, Dave, we had this montage video of some of the production. You're not going to believe how cool it's looking at. Okay, so check it out. What I'm, what I'm going to show you right here, I'm actually sitting in this little building that is just, it was a way for the Lord to communicate the system to me. When he had me carving, you know, the angel from the Led, Eb, Led Zeppelin album out of metal and doing all these things in all these doves, I was like, what is going on? It was so much work, it'd blow your mind. I was staying up till 3 and 4 in the morning regularly uh, carving stuff uh, over at this place. I had uh, an office, and uh, it was unbelievable. But he used the whole building, even the dimensions of the building, to communicate to me, which is nothing he hasn't done in the past with other prophets. Um, but it's it's so fascinating just to get to... Like right now, I'm sitting in the building... That's got uh, the images that I'm going to show you. Um, I might, it might be kind of cool to show you the image from the folder so you can see it. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah. So, so here's one of the images I'm talking about. So this is, this is the head of a dragon. I mean, you can see it. So there's the eye of the dragon right there. And, and so, you know, here's the nostrils of the dragon right here. And so here's the dragon's mouth. But, the dragon, this, this dragon head right here is really clamping down on an angel. And that's why, and the angel's holding the letter Z and the letter P in his hand. That's from a Led Zeppelin album. The Lord told me, look at it, pay attention. And I was like, this is so weird. Why would you have me? And I was like, you want me to cut out a Led Zeppelin? album cover and put it in this little building that I'm making like a church and I was like I don't know maybe I'm not hearing right <laughs> maybe I'm and I uh, know he said yeah that's what I want you to do you'll understand and I did because the angel is holding a z and a p and the, and that's 20 26 16 kata dynasteo down dynasty let me and so I'm going to show it to you in this little part I'll play this last little part because for me, it's a little slice of history. It's it's pretty wild. Okay, so there's there's the dragon right there. That's actually on the wall right above me to my right. And it shows the angels being brought down, like powerfully brought down by the dragon. So here you go. And here we go. Let me show you what I was going to do. I'm going to show you all some pictures. Y'all got to see this. Okay, so I've got one of the, you know, I told you the walls, angels falling, angels going up, angels on one wall coming down, angels on the other wall going up, and the Lord told me to put that angel from, like, Swan Song, whatever, the Led Zeppelin angel, and you know me, I tell you this all the time, I kind of like argue with God sometimes, I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense, why do you want me to, what? The, what is this, a Led Zeppelin party pad? It's like, I was like, you want me to use the angel from the Led Zeppelin thing? I don't get it. To show the system. And then, but just wait. Don't make any snap judgments. A lot of people do that. Whoa, Everybody freaks out. Just hang on. He told me to change it. To augment it. And so I did. So check this out. So, let's see. See the dragon, see the dragon eating the angel, let's see, see the dragon, it's really a dragon eating an angel, 
So anyway, so let me show you. So there you go. So I've already done that much of the of that. So I changed it up and I made the dragon very obvious, eating the angel. And then he told me to let him have. That's pretty good too. Check that out. Let's see. So I have different eyes on there. And so here's a good one. There's like a dark green. I was trying, I was experimenting with different colored eyes. So it's, it really, oh, that's kind of cool. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool too, right? So anyway, so I really, oh, pfft, you got to see this one. <laughs> so check it out. Look. So I'm experimenting with these different colored like slit eyes. And so there's kind of the wall I was working on. Guys, I've been working so late at night. I, so let's see. So there's one of the walls I'm working on outside. So he wanted me to show the Z and the P so I could show their system, how they hide their communications. Z26, P16. Let's look it up real quick because I, I forgot exactly what it is. So 2616, right? What's this? Because a Led Zeppelin can't fly, neither can a fallen angel, right? Let's see, 26, 16. To exercise power over, there it is. To treat harshly, look, kata, down. See, there it is. Properly, powerfully bringing someone down denying them the higher position or blessing they should enjoy, tyrannize, dominate. Okay, so see, that's why it's a dragon eating a freaking angel. Z-P. A Led Zeppelin can't fly, neither can an angel that's powerfully been brought down. So there's going to be a little equals like Z equals 26, P equals 16. And then down at the bottom, there's going to be other angels falling, you know, like coming down like meteors. I've already got them and it's looking really good. So, <laughs> so anyway, then it's going to have that word cut out of metal, like the exact definition down underneath it. So if someone walks in there like, what's with the Z and the P equals 2616? And they'll rate 2616. They'll be like, oh my Lord. It's like, wait a minute. They'll... Yeah, their head's going to explode. Can you imagine walking in there not knowing any of this? And you're like, what the hell's going on in here? <laughs> so ah! Someone's going to have like a, a, oh, come to Jesus moment, right? <laughs> Can you imagine just walking in there and seeing what's on the walls, like going, what the hell's going on in this place? Like all these weird lights and <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Anyway, so that wall's almost done. And um, then I got the angels going up. Isn't that wild? Angels going down, kata, and up, ana. I mean, you know, you just, who could even think this up? I mean, this is, so... I was talking to a friend of mine today. Now let's just talk for a second. I just want to talk to y'all because I want to be very clear about this because it's kind of bugging me, you know? I mean, it's not so easy being a messenger. I mean, it's really kind of... <laughs> it's like, what? You want me to do what? Get a parachute with a V for vengeance? Like, you'll show me, draw it out. And I draw it out, you know, and then next thing you know, I'm jumping a big red X in Grand Junction. I just do what he says, man. Just it, as soon as I know he's confirmed what to do, I do it. Once I get my confirmation, I just, I just act on it. That's what faith is. And so, you know, the little cat door thing, you know, the bat cat thing. By the way, it's really sad. I really miss bat cat. Don't anybody ever think about giving me another cat because I'm done. Anyway, but... To have I am the door written over there, and the word door is upside down in Hebrew. I mean, what are the odds of that? And then the Lord telling me, I'll tell you when to lock the little door and to ring a bell. Now, here's the thing. I really want to say this publicly because I'm going to refer every, every psychotic, lunatic, false prophet hunter to this video. Now, when the Lord tells me to lock that door and ring the bell, 
unless he specifically tells me, like, and I do mean specifically tells me to say, okay, well, this is it. This is the end. The bell's been rung. It's over in seven days. Uh, I ain't saying nothing. All I'm saying is he's telling me to lock the door and ring a bell. What does that mean exactly? I guess. You know what I mean? I mean, it's so hard for me to go, well, it's going to be the end of the world. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't want to, I'm not going to say what I don't know. But if he gives me the, okay, lock the door now and go out there and start ringing that bell, I'm going to be like, okay. Is there anything you want me to tell your people? Is there anything you want me to say on YouTube? Whatever he tells me to do, I'll do. But if he doesn't give me anything specific, I'll just leave it where it is and say, well, he told me to lock the door and ring the bell. What does that mean? Well, maybe all the animals are in the ark. The stragglers showed up. <laughs> Hell, I don't know. I'm winging this, guys. I'm just... I'm serious. I'll just, I'm just doing whatever he tells me. I never know. I just trust him. How's that? So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there because it's really awkward. I mean, try being me. It's like, what? <laughs> you want me to do what? Okay. All right. Anyway, there it is. Thanks for letting me just, thanks for letting me just get to be me. I feel like me, you know? I really do. I feel like really comfortable. Just like, pfft, I could care less. I don't care what people think. I mean, unless they have like a churro and ice cream and I don't have one, then I care. But other than that, I'm pretty easy going. All right. Okay, guys. Group hug. I love you guys. Peace and grace. And I'm just. Okay. All right. So. Keep marching it out, okay, because the end's coming. You know it's coming, right? You all know it, right? The end is coming. And you know what the end is? A new beginning. Yes. All right, God bless you guys. Good night. All right, guys. Well, that was kind of entertaining, really. <laughs> I was like... I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. So, yeah, just like I said in the video, when the Lord tells me to do something, I do it. When he told me to ring the bell on my birthday, I had no idea why he wanted me to ring the bell. But he told me he would tell me exactly when to ring the bell. And and even though people were calling me all day, when are you going to ring the bell, Johnny? I was like, dude, stop, please. He even told me to leave the house and come back later. And I did. And Corey was here. Cat was here. And he said, okay, ring the bell now. And he literally had me read it. I mean, ring it at 1226. And uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was not 1226. 226. Let me see. Uh, so Strong's. Uh oh, wait. Uh, I thought I was looking up this. Yep. Let's see. I think it's 226. Strong's 226. Yeah, Al Alutheo. And remember, this is from the guy that the night I got saved, he said, turn the tag over 100% nylon, turn to 100% no lion, like 100% truth. So he had me ring a bell on my birthday at 226. It means to speak the truth. I say, I say, speak truth, do truth, maintain the truth. Uh, it literally means truthing right here. Speaking reality, truth into a person's life. Making a record of what God deems as truth, reality, and fact. Uh, literally to truth. Includes spirit-led confrontation where it is vital to tell the truth so others can live in God's reality rather than personal illusion. And that's why that weirdness at the ark and what those people are doing now um, and uh, speaking evil and maligning me, they're going to have to answer to the one I serve. Just a fact. And the, you know, the entire channel, the whole, the whole thing that, that's doing it. And there's many channels like that. It's just weird. 
But it's no surprise. The Bible says, if they hated me, they'll hate you. If they called me the prince of demons, how much more will they, my followers? Because it's the twin female serpent system in the story. All right. I love you in Christ. Peace and grace. I love you guys. Good night.